Hello and welcome to this tutorial on why the VCT is used in image compression. Now, the discrete cosine transform is often thought of as a real version of the discrete Fourier transform. But that's in essence true, you don't have the imaginary sine part, but uh, that's not really a very good argument. So, there's a much more compelling statistical reason for why the VCT is a so-called optimal transform. One being that of minimum error. So, but to understand why that is, we need to know something a little bit about principal component analysis, which is a statistical technique for data reduction. So, it works from two perspectives. One being the optimality of dimension reduction and the orthogonality of lower dimensions. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> Let's step back a little bit. Suppose you're surveying a class of 100 students and you're tracking two parameters per student. So your data matrix looks something like this. You decide to plot that into dimensional space and you get a bivariate ellipse. So you notice that there's a linear positive relationship between x1 and x2, so they're pretty highly correlated. And you also notice that the variability of x2 and variability of x1 is quite large. So how can we compress this data set? Let's rotate our coordinate system. If we rotate our coordinate system to z1 and z2 such that it's, z1 lies along the direction of maximum variation of the ellipse, something quite interesting happens. Now that the axes of the bivariate ellipse lie along the coordinate system, z1 and z2 are now independent. And we also notice that the variability of z1 is much higher than the variability of z2. So in a way, z2 is quite redundant. So we can actually just discard z2 and represent x1 and x2 by z1 alone with the minimum possible error. So from a geometric transform uh, point of view, z1, z2, and x1, x2 are related by the transpose of a rotation matrix. And that was for two dimensions. Let's move to n dimensions. It's a lot easier than it sounds. So you're tracking n parameters per student, and your number of dimensional reductions actually depends on the correlation within your data set. So what does that mean? If I rotate an n-dimensional space, or whatever the transform it is, so let's suppose it's this transform, which is n by n. Each zj is related to x by aj transpose times x. Now, this faces two conditions. To be able to reduce a num number of dimensions in an optimal way, we need to have our basis vectors be orthogonal. And we want our variability, each new axis, to be in a descending order. Eventually, we want to discard some of these. But let's compute the variability of one of the axes now. So variability of z of j equals the variability of aj transpose times x, which is just aj transpose times the covariance matrix of your original data set times aj. Now, our problem essentially boils down to maximizing that variability such that orthogonality is maintained, which is a constrained Lagrangian maximization problem. So you define a function L, which is the variability of z of j minus some scalar lambda times our constraint. So you take the derivative of this time with respect to a of j, set that to zero, eventually land up with this. This is a classic eigenvector decomposition problem, which can be summarized as you want the determinant of s minus lambda times the identity matrix to be equal to zero. That equation is going to have n roots lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and you arrange them in a descending order, and these are eigenvalues. Now, to get the eigenvectors, you substitute each lambda back into this equation. Now, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, let's get back to the point. So, let's define a matrix P, where each column is one of the eigenvectors we just derived. Now, if you apply, if you take this matrix P and multiply it with our original data set, this rotation automatically occurs. We never plug in any angle. We never plug in this rotation matrix. It just happens optimally. So what does this have to do with the DCT? For that, let's take an example in MATLAB. Um, this is a picture I took in Sample. And if you 
load this into MATLAB. What we get is this is code generated by Professor Alan Selesnik of the NYT School of Engineering, and he loads the figure into MATLAB and then converts it into a one dimensional vector and extracts sequences of length A. So each point in your eight dimensional data, data cloud is one of those eight sequences. He then, I should mention that PCA only works on zero mean data sets. So in case your data is not zero mean, you have to subtract that, which is done over here. Then you compute the covariance matrix, you do eigenvector decomposition, and you display the PCA basis vectors. Let's have a look. Something quite interesting. So notice that this is a constant signal. This is a half cycle of a cosine. This is one cycle of a cosine, and so on and so forth. These look almost exactly like the DCT basis vectors. These are PCA basis vectors. This is the optimal transform, and DCT almost exactly approximates it. So, in a sense, DCT is an optimal transform in the sense of PCA, and it achieves the lowest possible error. Also, <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching.